assalamu alaikum everyone so this is the third part of the lecture series for WLAN 802.11 and in the previous lecture we learned up to active and passive scanning so for, for this lecture we're going to start with medium access control with support for quality of service so 802.11 uh, which has uh, the rule sets for medium access control and also has a support for quality of service defines two coordination functions one of those is the point coordination function or PCF okay so the PCF is different from a distributed coordination function or DCF uh, with respect to the fact that it lets the stations have priority access to the radio channel okay and the coordination is done by the point coordinator or the PC uh, which is a station and uh, this station is as you all know co uh, resides in the access point or AP so as there is a point coordinator this is why the function is called the point coordination function so the PCF has a higher priority than DCF because the period during which PCF is used is protected from the DCF access by the NAV or network allocation vector so the network allocation vector is as you have already seen before right it's used for virtual sensing so whenever the nav is turned on no other stations can access the network even though the network might not be busy at that time so as the PCF uh, it turns on the nav when it starts communicating all other uh, stations or all other stations which are following the distributed coordination function cannot access the uh, medium at the same time so when PCF is going on DCF cannot access it this is how the higher priority of PCF is maintained even though stations which follow DCF are nearby so this is an overview of how the distribution uh, distributed coordination function and point coordination function uh, coexist uh, among each other so the time during which 802.11 stations operate is divided into separate uh, periods which are called super frames okay so it, it can be no called as a cycle so each cycle has a specific part so it starts with a beacon includes a CFP and then a CP so what is a CFP and what is a CP so as you can see in the figure it is already marked uh, the CFP is the contention free service and the CP is the contention period so CFP is contention free period and CP is contention period so what does this mean this means during the contention free period all the stations have to uh, try for contention or they have to try to access the network and during that time the distributed coordination function or DCF is carried out and the contention period sorry uh, that was contention period so contention period means all the nodes have to try to access the uh, medium or they have to contend for the period or for the channel which is why it is called the contention period and the contention free period means that period during which no station has to contend for the uh, medium so how do they get the medium the point coordinator assigns medium to different stations uh, based on the time slots for example if the contention and free period is going on then the access point uh, designates or allocates separate time slots to different stations who want access to the uh, medium so during the contention free period the PCA for point coordination function is used for accessing the channel as I've already said because the access point or the point coordinator decides when the channel will be accessed and during the contention period the DCF is used or the distributed coordination function is used so this will become more clear as we go deeper into the materials so let's move on so in this figure we can see at the very top uh, there is one figure and uh, at the bottom there is another figure so let's go through this okay so this is an example of point coordination function so as you can see uh, at the top figure at the very first station 4 has just finished transmitting and after SIFS time station 3 sent an acknowledgement which means actually station 4 and station 3 were communicating with each other so that was a DCF data transmission during a contention period okay so just after that is sent after PIFS time uh, PIFS means 
it is only for point coordination function okay and if it was for distributed coordination function then they had to wait for difs time so as this is for point coordination function as a result you have to only wait for pifs time okay so as you can see this is the pifs time slot and after pifs time uh, the beacon is sent so the beacon can only be sent by the access point remember this no other station can send the beacon and as you can see there is a marking here right so this means that before the beacon was sent it was a contention period or the period during which the stations have to contend and they follow the DCF or distributed coordination function and just after the beacon has been sent uh, the time period which starts is called the CFP or contention free period so during this period PCF or point coordination function is used and you can see another term here which is the TBTT or uh, time uh, beacon transmission time okay just target beacon transmission time so during the TBTT or after every TBTT time the beacon is sent okay and as you can see just the, during the TBTT time the beacon is being sent so who is sending the beacon station 1 so as you can see here PC is written here uh, after station 1 which means the station 1 is the point coordinator and station 2 station 3 station 4 these are all normal stations okay so as you can see uh, station 1 or the point coordinator just send the beacon so just after the beacon has been finished transmitting as you can see the nav has been reset so you can see this is the starting of one nav and then it was reset to start from a different time because the beacon contains the time information of the nav as well that means the time the station 1 requires to communicate so just when the beacon is set uh, the nav also is set after listening to the beacon and it is updated as you can see it's written here station 3 sets nav at tbtt and updated after the beacon reception okay so just after the beacon uh, the station 1 waits for sifs time and directly sends data with another polling as you can see here there is no contention window here remember the contention window is only for DCF so during PCF there is no contention window so after SIFS time the data plus CF poll or contention uh, uh, sorry coordination function poll is done this poll means the station 1 is asking whether any other station has any data to send so currently it is sending the data to station 2 which is why this CF poll actually is intended for station 2 so after data and CF poll is sent it waits for SIFS time and then station 2 returns a data packet because of the CF poll so the station 2 has some data to send which is why the station 2 sent the data directly after the CF poll was given to it so it doesn't only send the data packet it also sends the CF acknowledgement for the data it received so the station 2 is sending the data and also acknowledgement at the same time so when this data is re uh, received by station 1 or the point coordinator then the point coordinator again waits for SIFS time and then sends uh, the data and the CF poll again so do you have any other message or data to send or not so this is what the station 1 is again asking but now the station 2 does not have any data to send so instead of sending the data it only sends the CF acknowledgement okay so after getting the acknowledgement without any data the station 1 now knows that the station 2 does not have any data to send so now after waiting for SFS time it directly sends the CF end so the CF end means the end of the entire point coordination phase or the contention free uh, phase or contention free period so just after the CF end is sent the nav is again reset that means the nav has finished so then all the other stations can now again content for the channel so the point coordination function finishes here and the distributed coordination function starts from this place when the CF end is given okay as you can see it is marked CP or contention period here one thing you have to notice is station 4 is hidden to the point coordinator okay so the point coordinator station 1 can detect station 2 and also can detect station 3 but it cannot detect station 4 
so uh, station 4 is hidden from uh, PC or point coordinate so it does not receive any data packet or any beacon from station 1 which is why it does not set the nav the nav is only set by station 3 so station 2 also does not send the nav why because station 1 has to communicate with station 2 so station 2 does not need to set the nav so this station that means station 4 we're talking about station 4 now so this station should not be part of the BSS coordinated by the point coordinator so as you can clearly understand here when station 4 is communicating with station 3 it is actually communicating without or being in a separate B BSS or in a separate basic service set so station 1 2 3 these three together form one basic service set and station 4 forms another basic service set so the basic service set formed by station 1 2 and 3 is coordinated by station 1 which is the point coordinator so let's move on to the second figure now in the second figure as you can see this is the target beacon transmission time right so this is when station 1 is supposed to send the beacon but due to some reason uh, the uh, contention period was delayed so as you can see station 2 is still sending the MSDU or max service data unit so during that time the beacon was not able to be started as a result after acknowledgement some time is passed and then the beacon is being given and after that beacon then CF pole and no response to pole which is why after PIFS time it directly started sending pole to another data packet okay so if if uh, if uh, there is a response then the response will be after SIFS time and PIFS time is larger than SIFS time right so if somehow after SIFS time no data packet is given then the uh, station 1 assumes that uh, there is no data to send so after waiting for PIFS time it sends another pole to another station and that station let's say in this example that station now has a data to send so it is sending a data along with a CF acknowledgement okay then again the station 1 is sending a CF pole so as you can see in this scenario the station 1 or coordinator does not have any data to send which is why it is only sending a data pole then again that node re uh, re returns or responds with data and acknowledgement and now it means that it doesn't have anything else to send which is why the station 1 will now end it okay so as you can see uh, there are two problems here okay first of all why do we need point coordination function so point coordination function is required to maintain uh, quality of service okay so if you know what quality of service is quality of service means that the delay of the packets need to be measured for example uh, I am talking now right so if somehow the word which I'm saying now comes later than some other word for example let's say my name is something okay so if the words come in a jumbled manner instead of my name is let's say it comes in the in the order of my is name right so this becomes uh, not it, it is difficult to understand what I'm saying which is why in in this case the order needs to be maintained my has to come first then name then is so this order needs to be maintained whenever the order needs to be maintained the data is called a synchronous data or synchronous packets and when the order doesn't need to be maintained it's called an asynchronous data or asynchronous packets okay so voice video all these are synchronous data packets so in these cases the order of the packets also need to be maintained and the data packets need to move faster so that uh, the message can be understandable compared to that let's say when we are talking about files it's not required when we are using files you can directly send the data right and you don't have to uh, think about the order so when all the data are received it can be uh, merged together to form the file okay so when we're talking about at synchronous data packets we need quality of service so quality of service maintains that uh, the order of the messages are uh, followed okay so the orders are not broken so this thing is maintained by quality of service so in this example as we are seeing the point coordination function so this helps in providing quality of service how does it do that as you can see when the beacon is started no other station can access the channel 
only the point coordination function can communicate with the other stations as a result during this time no other station can you know interfere with the data packet being sent by the point coordination function or when the point coordination function is communicating with any other station no other station can disturb here as a result here the guarantee of service or the quality of service can be maintained the data packet that is sent will not be corrupted by anyone else there will be no collision and nothing so this is how point coordination function actually uh, maintains the quality of service but in the second scenario we can see there are two problems here which actually causes problem to maintain the quality of service what are the problems the first one is sometimes the uh, contention period this this is the contention period and after that the contention free period starts right so sometimes the contention period can uh, take longer time than required and sometimes it can cross over to the contention free period as you can see here the tbtt during the tbtt actually the contention period contention free period should have started but somehow it was delayed because station 2 still had data to stand so as you can see uh, it had data to send right so start of cfp is delayed this is one problem whenever the start of the cfp is delayed this means that quality of service was not maintained another problem is the duration of the data frame or the time required for every other station to communicate with the station one or point coordinator coordination function or with the point coordinator is not fixed as a result the other stations can take any amount of time so the duration of data frame is unknown to the point coordinator so this is another reason why the point point coordinator does not know how long he has to keep the contention free period open so these are the two problems that actually uh, uh, call, cause problems so that we cannot maintain quality of service using point coordination function other than these two problems the point coordination function actually can maintain the quality of service so this is just uh, explaining whatever i said so the previous figure is an example of the pcf operation station one is the pc or point coordinator as i've already said and it pulls station two so here in the very first scenario it pulls station two but in the second scenario uh, at the beginning it might be polling some other station because it did not get a response and then it, it is again polling station two so now it got a response so station 3 detects the beacon frame and updates the nav for the whole contention free period so as uh, as you already saw station 3 is updating in the nav here after listening to the beacon so cfp may be delayed lower part of the figure as we've already said the cfp might be delayed so the point coordinator has data pending for station 2 so whenever it has data pending it combines the data and pole frame into a data frame as you can see here it is sending the data and the pole frame together so the pc continues polling other stations until the cfp expires or the time required for the contention free period expires so no idle period longer than pifs occur during the contention free period so as you can see the idle time this is the idle time pifs sifs so any time during which data packet is not sent is called the idle time so in the point coordination function as you can see PIFS time is the maximum time during which the uh, data packets are not being sent or the channel is idle and the second smallest time is uh, sorry second largest time is SIFS time so as you can see there are no contention windows here which is why this uh, point coordination function is very fast in terms of throughput and very efficient in terms of throughput so the maximum time the channel is idle is only for PIFS and that is only before the beacon all the other idle times are actually equal to SIFS time which is the smallest interframe space so the SCF end control frame is transmitted to signal the end of the contention free period so as we can see here uh, the CF end is used to end or signal the end of the contention free period and after that the contention period starts so the time the beacon is delayed from TBTT determines the delay of the transmission of time bounded MSDUs that have to be delivered to the, in the CFP. So the delay that is rec uh, that happens that that we've seen here, this is the delay it is talking about. So when that delay is occurred, what happens is the time bounded MSDUs. So time bounded MSDUs means 
packets which are synchronous so they have to maintain an order they have to maintain some time limit they have to reach the destination within a given time so the time bounded msdus that have to be delivered in the contention free period they are delayed because of what because the beacon is being delayed so this is one problem as i have already told you right and the second problem is the duration of the msu delivery after polling is not under the control of the point coordinator as i've already said when other stations are communicating with the point coordinator the point coordinator does not know how long the station needs to communicate which in the same way also reduces the quality of service provided to other stations that are polled during the rest of the cfp okay so what does that mean let's say uh, pc is communicating with station 2 so station 2 is keeping on sending data and sending data right so station 3 is being starved station 3 might have some other data to send which is also time bounded but as station 1 does not know how long station 2 will communicate it cannot do anything about it so this is another problem because the station 3's quality of service is not maintained in this scenario so this is the second problem so the uh, the solution to these problems is another version of 802.11 which is 802.11e or 802.11e extension okay so this introduces the hybrid coordination function or hcf for quality of service support so this is sort of changed compared to the before scenarios before we had two different functions right distributed coordination function and uh, <coughs> a point coordination function so now we have a separate coordination function which is HCF or hybrid coordination function so the HCF defines two medium access mechanisms one is the contention based channel access so previously it was called the contention period now it is called the contention based channel access and the second one is controlled channel access so previously it was called a uh, contention free period so there was a contention period and a contention free period so the contention period is now called the contention based channel access and the contention free period is called the contention uh, sorry controlled channel access so the con the contention based channel access is also referred to as enhanced distributed channel access or edca and the control channel access which includes polling right the control part the part where the point coordination function occurs or let's say the point coordinator uses polling right so that is the uh, that is the control channel access we are talking about so during that time uh, this this is also called as hcf or a uh, control channel access hcf control channel access which is hcca so edca and hcca edca is for con contention based channel access and hcca is for control channel access so okay so there may be there may still be two phases of operation within a super frame just like before a contention period and a contention free period so edca is only used in contention period okay and hcca is used in both contention period and uh, contention free period okay so as we can clearly understand the edca is sort of like the point coordination function and hcca is the combination of point coordination function and uh, uh, distributed coordination function which is why it is called the hybrid coordination function or hcf controlled channel access so this is how it works as you can see the distributed coordination function is still here but uh, on top of it instead of only pcf now hcf is uh, going on or hcf is being followed which is hybrid coordination function so th there are three parts inside hcf point coordination function or pcf which is what we already know we have seen it and two new things as we have seen hcca and edca okay so hcf controlled access and hcf contention based access okay so let's go through what each of these are for so the pcf is used for contention based services based on pcf and hcf so dcf is only used when the uh, the data packets are not time bound that means they do not have to follow quality of service okay and then we have uh, hcf or contention based access so this is required for time prioritized quality of services okay so the qas is maintained by edca 
and HCCA is required for time bounded services with QoS guaranteed. So one is contention based, so there can be contention here and one is controlled access. So the controlled access part of HCF guarantees that no one will interfere, okay? And the PCF is the normal PCF that we saw earlier. So this is contention free service for non QoS as a uh, PCF cannot maintain proper QoS. So it is used for non QoS, but contention free services. Okay. So there are many functions here, but <coughs> we already know what PCF and DCF is. The only new things for us is HCCA and EDCA. So there are some concepts here which are which are not difficult. So the Q the BSS which is now following quality of service is called QBSS and the coordinator which was previously called point coordinator is now called hybrid coordinator. Okay, so these are simple uh, differences. So now the important thing is there are multiple back of processes. Previously there was only one back of process, right? If if you go back, so which what is the back of process? So this is the back of process, right? Uh, when we wait for PIF, uh, DIFS time and then wait for a specific contention period time, this is called the back of process, right? Before sending the RTS. So now let's go back to our current slide. So instead of one back of process, previously there was only one back of process when you want to send data packet, right? But now there will be multiple back of processes operating in parallel within 1802.11 e station okay so we are talking about 802.11 e now not the normal 802.11 okay this is the extension so this will be explained later on what are the multiple backup processes are okay so each <coughs> uh, each uh, station will now have a TAXOP or transmission opportunity this is a fixed interval of time and only during this time interval the data packet can be sent okay so TXOPs which are obtained via the contention based medium access so we are talking about the contention period not the contention free period so during the time when we have to content for the channel the transmission opportunity needs to be followed Okay, so the transmission opportunity during the contention based medium access is called EDCA transmission opportunities or EDCA TXOPs and are limited. That means they have a fixed size, which is the TXOP limit. So you cannot cross this limit. Okay, so this is solving one problem. What was the problem? You do not know how long the contention uh, period will go on, right? <coughs> and the contention period can sometimes cross over into the contention free period but now as there is a TAXOP limit set so you cannot cross this limit as a result it will now never cross over into the contention uh, free period okay so one problem is solved and the TXOPs for the HCCA time is called HCCA TXOPs okay so these are obtained by the hybrid coordinator via the controlled medium access and protected by NAVs okay so this is for the quality of service period okay or the contention free period during which nav is maintained so no one can access the channel okay so a time period in which the HCS control over the wireless medium is called the controlled access phase so during this time actually the hybrid coordinator controls who can access the channel which is why it is called the CAP or controlled access phase okay so these are the four back of procedures that we were talking about so uh, these four internal back of processes are going on in each station and there are four categories what are the categories voice category video category best effort and background okay so the most important is voice which is why it has the highest priority then is video and then is best effort so best effort is not quality of service so you do not have to maintain quality of service and the, at the last is background which is the least important so each back of entity within a station independently contents for a transmission opportunity so what this means that every uh, four different type of data packets are trying to access the channel at the same time but in the same station so they are not actually contending using data packets they are actually contending inside the station so any collisions between them is handled by the virtual collision handler and if there is no collision only then uh, the access category 0, 1, 2 or 3 or uh, any of these access categories can access the channel only when 
there is no virtual collision so even if there is a virtual collision there is not a problem because this collision can be, can be handled by the station and the channel is still free because it is a virtual collision not an actual collision okay so if if you're having trouble understanding everything till now you can obviously ask questions so don't worry about it okay so this is an example of the different access categories trying to access the channel so as you can see the difference between the different access categories are maintained through the interframe space so the highest priority has to wait for only DIFS time okay and the second let's say highest priority has to wait for more than DIFS time as you can see one slot time plus DIFS time and the lowest priority has to wait for even longer time okay so this is how the priority is maintained so as the highest priority has to wait for less time compared to the other stations it can access quickly and the other uh, let's say lower priority access categories cannot access quickly compared to the higher priority okay so this is how the priority is maintained so every station has to wait for at least DIFS time but depending on the priority it might have to wait for more than DIFS time so now the uh, interframe space is called AIFS not DIFS okay so AIFS is of four types because of the four different categories okay so this is the formula for calculating the AIFS okay so uh, the size of the contention window in back of stage after I minus one time is okay this is the same as before so the contention window size is uh, increases for each uh, unsuccessful uh, attempt okay the collision probability increases with smaller contention window size uh, if there are more than one back of entity of the respective uh, access category operating in the QBSS okay so if more than one access category are trying to operate in the same QBSS then the, uh, the collision probability increases with smaller contention window okay or contention window size okay so uh, nothing uh, new here so the smaller contention window max okay that one was minimum size and this is the maximum contention window so the higher the medium access priority uh, a small contention window may increase the collision probability so what does it mean so this means that if the contention window size is smaller that means it has a higher priority because it can try to access the channel earlier compared to the other stations okay and with larger uh, contention window size it means that it has less priority okay so this is what this means it's uh, quite simple so besides retry counters similar to legacy 802.11 802.11e or ext uh, the extension also defines a maximum msdu lifetime per access category to allow a frame to remain in mac or medium access uh, control okay so this means that there is also a retry counter for 802.11 e so that uh, I, the uh, the stations uh, do not try to keep sending the message again and again okay so that that limit uh, and the fixed time for uh, an access category or the transmission opportunity time limit is called transmission opportunity limit as i've already said and the retry counters are called now qsrc for short retry counter and qlrc for long retry counter okay so just like before only the names have been changed okay uh, so when more than one enti entity is in the same station that means access categories of the same station reach zero at the same time a virtual collision occurs but it's not a problem because there is no real collision so all the other packets can actually access the channel at that time okay so okay I have already explained these things so you can you can you can you know go through these uh, whatever we, uh, we have said up to now I've already explained this but you can go through the slides if you do not understand anything please feel free to ask questions and this is an example of a super frame okay so as you can see the super frame is divided into contention free period and the contention period so during the contention free period at the very beginning it starts with beacon during tbtt and then there is a polling and after polling there is an acknowledgement as you can see or rts in this case then the cts is also given so the data packet is sent this is the data packet then again acknowledgement data packet acknowledgement and so on okay so this time is called the controlled CAP right the access phase controlled access phase okay what we have already learned before 
so as you can see here there is a CTS and RTS here and it is sending multiple packets uh, uh, only with acknowledgement right this is because this is a fragmented data packet so in case of fragmented data packet after each packet only acknowledgement is given so no RTS and CTS is required okay so this is why uh, only acknowledgement data packet acknowledgement data packet uh, this is how it goes on and then uh, the contention period starts okay so during the contention period as you can see there is no access point or no point coordinator here so uh, there can be two ways this is uh, implemented okay so now this is the normal uh, transmission opportunity as you can see at the very right so at first the RTS is sent then the CTS is sent then a large data packet is sent and then uh, acknowledgement okay so this is the normal uh, communication or uh, let's say without quality of service but even during the contention period now the uh, the access point can start sending packet even during the contention period so this is new so as you can see here this is not normal transmission opportunity this is the controlled access period or controlled access phase so during this period even when the contention period is going on uh, the the point coordinator can still send a beacon and then start communication okay so this is different compared to the 802.11 normal uh, contention period okay so as you can see here uh, this is an example of, of block acknowledgement which can be used for fragmented packets so in fragmented packets if you remember after each packet uh, there was one acknowledgement sent right but the time can be decreased even more using block acknowledgement so in case of block acknowledgement after every fragmented data pack data packet directly one block acknowledgement packet is returned okay so instead of sending multiple acknowledgement one acknowledgement is enough which acknowledges all the packets that have been sent so if some packet is missing then the black block acknowledgement will not contain the missed packet okay so in this way you can actually understand whether any packet was missed or not but you don't have to send separate acknowledgement packets for every data packet so this is how the throughput efficiency is also improved in this extension so this is another protocol uh, which is uh, new in h 2.11 e so this is called the direct link protocol so whenever let's say you have to communicate with another station but you do not actually need the access point okay so then you can set up a direct link protocol so in this scenario what happens the let's say this is the quality uh, station one and station two and they need to communicate with each other so q means they are followed following quality of service or the new uh, formula or the new protocol which is why they are now called q station instead of normal station so what happens uh, station one wants to communicate with station two so it sends a dlp request to the access uh, point okay and uh, when the access point uh, sends that request again to station two and station two responds that okay i can form the direct link protocol or i am free now so after that the uh, qap or access point again sends the response to station one so now station one can communicate with station two directly so in the during this time the access point is not required as a result the communication is faster okay so this is direct link protocol which is another new part of 802.11 e and this also increases the efficiency so next uh, the topic which starts is radio spectrum management but we will not look into spectrum management and then then there are some history as well and we do not also need this part but you can look through it to have some idea okay so with that uh, that was the end of uh, 802.11 or WLAN okay so I know this might be a bit difficult to understand but you have to ask questions if you ask questions then I can clear everything and as there are no discussion classes before the exam so I, I will talk with your seers and select a separate discussion class and the seers can communicate with you and select that one so that I, so that I can answer your questions and even you know talk about uh, the final uh, mid exam or how the exam will be taken. Okay, so with this, I'm going to end the lecture for today. Assalamualaikum, everyone, and of course, feel free to ask questions later on.